Hello Top Putters, this is Simon Mas. In this installment of the Top 5 series, I'll present you with my personal Top 5 songs by Pink Floyd. As usual, you should take this list as an absolute God-given piece of truth. <laughs> just kidding, these are just my opinions. Still, these videos are great conversation starters for the two or three fans that will watch till the end. Anyhow, they also give us an excuse to listen to great music. So, without further ado, let's begin with… A Pillow Winds is the second song on metal. It's a bridge between One of These Days and Fearless, but it's not a simple placeholder. In fact, A Pillow Winds contrasts the violence of One of These Days and it paves the way to the still gentle but more rhythmically involved Fearless. But the song is incredible by itself. It, here we go again, bridges multiple cultural influences into one piece of music. The name of the song comes from a type of hand of mahjong, a Chinese game. The insistence of the bass on the low E creates a pedal almost throughout the song, like the drones used in Indian music. One minute into the song, one of the acoustic guitars is plucked too hard by mistake, creating a buzz that to me sounds like a sitar. Is that just a coincidence? The open tune guitars and the picking pattern scream late 1960s Californian acoustic rock and the lyrics with their whirlwind of images. Some say this is a love song, but to me, it's almost about an ever-changing reality centered around the self. It's an assurance that everything will be okay at the end of this musical journey, which is the stock message of almost all religions, right? All of these inputs produce a song that is delicate and gentle like few others I can think of. It really does feel like being wrapped in a soft pillow of warm, sweet sounds. I sometimes find myself singing this song to myself when I am really stressed, when I need to assure myself that things will go for the best and not just for the better, as I am fond to say. Leaving aside my linguistic idiosyncrasies and improper benzodiazepine-like uses, a pillow wins is a gem. It is a gem nestled on a golden ring. One of these days and fearless are the ring. Solid gold, but a pillow wins makes everything shine more. That's where the real value is. Dogs is bittersweet for me. Great song, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But it signaled the end of an era for Pink Floyd and the start of another. You can actually hear the transition between old and new in this song. The music parts are all quite plain. Simple, steady rhythm guitar, simple drum beats, simple droning keyboard sounds, simple bass. The connecting sections are also rather bare and meandering. We'll touch upon them further down the line. But the changes in tempo and character between the sections keep the interest of the listener alive. In case you care for labels, Dog is too diverse and long to be a straight rock song, but it is too simple to be prog. The most striking element of the music is Gilmore's tone for the solos. Bright, brittle, aggressive, it cuts through the music like a hot knife through butter. It is also miles away from the sweet warmth one had come to expect. Was that a reaction to punk? Waters' lyrics are also becoming increasingly hostile in dealing with alienation. The subject here is a guy who joyously leaves the capitalist rat race of constantly amassing more. And in fact, the dryness of the connecting sections of this song could pass as a musical statement on this character's life. Sadly, I don't think that's the case. Roger Waters pointed out that by the time Animals was recorded, Nick Mason's and Richard Wright's contributions to the music was minimal. 
hard to disagree listening to this arrangement. What's worst is that what you can hear in dogs will sometimes be used as a pastiche for the new Pink Floyd sound as a quick, unimaginative trampoline for Waters' socio-political lyrics or, after 1983, for Gilmer's guitar inventions. But that was to come. Here, everything still works, and it works really well. Let's make it clear, I'm talking about the music that starts 2 minutes 19 seconds into the track and ends at 5 minutes 43 seconds. Before that, there's a long, slow introduction. Synced clock alarms and the four instruments almost coming together from the four corners of the earth. It sounds fantastic, but it's really a bit boring. After that, there's Breed, reprise. I mean, come on, it's even on the lyrics sheet. Not that their price is bad, but it's not what I'm talking about here. And what I'm talking about here is a glorious piece of music. Richard Wright stands out for me. Gilmore has a big fat sound. How to complement it? With simple stabs providing rhythm, intensity and interest. Elegant and effective. Well done, Richard. I love how the B section slows the song down, turning down the intensity level. It feels like you're coming out for a breather. And I also love the guitar solo, which is excellent in every aspect. Pacing, sound, choice of notes. The lyrics are brutal, forcing you to face all the time you have wasted yourself. I recall listening to the song in my teens and thinking, wow, I will never waste time like this. It does not apply to me, no sir. But it did. Oh, Jesus. The amount of time I have wasted just because I felt I had all the time in the world. But then, the thing is, do we all really waste our time? Do we use it to learn something that is necessary to move on? or something that will come useful in some not obvious way later on, who knows. And who knows whether I started to run to catch the sun soon enough to at least see some of my plans coming to fruition. Like the pros say, keep on following me on this channel to see if I do. No, seriously, hitting that subscribe button means more videos and better quality from yours truly. Heaven is just a click away. Thank you! Atom Heart Mother came at a time when Pink Floyd were tired and starved for ideas, and yet they needed to come up with more music for their new album. All they had was the idea for a long untitled suite. When the four walked into the studio, they still didn't know what to do to complete the piece. In fact, they couldn't even agree on its name. Theme from an imaginary western. The amazing pudding? After the band completed their version of the music, they weren't impressed. Enter Scottish composer Ron Giesen. Giesen was given a rough mix of the track and the task. Complete the suite, providing more unity to the music. Giesen's ideas were added to the original music. And the name was found after the title of an Evening Standard article about a woman with a pacemaker powered by a radioactive plutonium isotope. Well, this song rocks. The themes are epic. The sections are diverse and exciting enough to take you on a breathtaking musical journey. The structure is tight thanks to Jason's score. For me, the most exciting moment comes when Nick Mason shouts silence in the studio after around 19 minutes and then the main theme starts again. I always wait for that part and it has never ceased to bring a thrill in these 25 plus years. Atom Heart Mother offers a lot of different atmospheres, from harsh to dreamy, from funny to dramatic, lyrical, violent, noisy. I really feel this is a great piece of 20th century music. Now, before moving to the top spot of this list, 
I'm giving you my favorite five Pink Floyd songs, but you will owe me yours at the end of the video. Come on, drop me a comment and let's give further ideas of how great this band is to whoever is watching this video to have a list of songs to check out. And now, what can beat all of this great music? I think it was 1994, perhaps early 1995, I had had the dark side of the moon since forever. Time to get a new Pink Floyd album to see if there was more meat to the band than what I knew. And since I have always been retentive, I placed the postal order for the Piper at the Gates of Down because it was their first album. Boy. Did I have low expectations when I first saw that cover? It looked like a dodgy 1960s record of stoners too high to play anything meaningful. I put the CD in, put the headphones on, and BAM! When Astronomy Domine ended, I had to stop. I remember I almost had vertigo. I had no idea what the hell I had listened to. I mean, Okay, I understood the basic elements of the song, but what in the world was going on with the rest? The rhythm guitar was out of this world. In fact, that wasn't even a rhythm guitar because it mixed rhythm and solo parts. At some point, that guitar is doubled with just a fraction of a second of delay between the left channel and the right one. And as you're thinking, Okay, that's too precise, it must be a delay. One part goes off a tangent. Oh, so those were two guitars after all. I heard different versions of how the mixing came to be finalized, some more reliable than others. Whoever was responsible though, must have suffered from ADHD or something similar. The sound just can't stand still. This song and the whole album really stand out as different from whatever else came out in 1967, and positively so. This is great stuff. And I mean, really great. Tell you what, as soon as I start playing again after this AstraZeneca debacle runs its course, I will transcribe the song and upload it on this channel. What do you say? Well, it's time to wrap this video up. Remember to comment with your top 5 list by Pink Floyd or with whatever comment you feel appropriate to this video. This, my dear top patterns, was Simon Mas. We'll meet again soon on this very screen for more music related content. Until then, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas! Music you love